Well, good morning, BookTube. Bill Rutenberg here with the Rutenberg Library. Um, seems like it's been a long time no see. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since I've really done a actual book video. Put out, put out a fun little video that was just a couple seconds long of my dog singing. But uh, the last couple weeks, I've been really concentrating on trying to finish uh, one of my books that I've been working on. And um, so I've been using those spare minutes in the morning to, you know, take little chunks out of this uh, great big book, American Caesar by William Manchester that I've been reading and um, finished it last night. Finally, uh, I've been working on it for a long time. But anyway, um, I feel like I kind of missed you. I haven't I haven't done any videos and um, so I wanted to make a video this morning. I, I do have some some mail haul that uh, I am going to video this weekend from Todd at Todd's Bursting Bookcase, and uh, I wanted to get that done, but that, that will probably be next. I'll try to maybe work on that next, but right now, what I wanted to do was do a, uh, a tag video. Uh, recently, uh, Mrs. Thomas over at Book Talks with Mrs. Thomas created a tag, and this tag was called the Reading Autobiography Tag. And um, Mrs. Thomas is working on in grad school on on her degree, and she's she's a teacher, and so her classes are very uh, reading oriented. And um, so one of her assignments that she had to do was, I, I believe, if I'm understanding correctly, and I'll leave the link to her video down below, by the way. Um, but the, the assignment was to you know be a little bit. Um, introspective and look at herself as a reader and they had to create something out of this and so she decided to turn it into a book tag and so um she tagged me she tagged me and, a, and somebody else and so i wanted to give my responses to this because i think it's a uh, it's a short tag it's only four questions but it's an excellent one so um let's go ahead and get started with it uh so what are your favorite books? Question number one, what are your favorite books? Um, so for me, I was, you know, trying to think about, uh, you know, there's a couple different ways you could answer this. What are your favorite individual books or what is your favorite maybe genre to read in? And for me, if I broke this down, um, those that follow the channel know I'm a nonfiction guy. If you look behind me, the vast majority of those books are nonfiction. And so I love to read nonfiction, specifically in American history. Um, I have just grown to absolutely love American history and everything it entails, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I like learning about it. And um, I like trying to, in my life, look at those uh, awesome things that have happened in history and, you know, just celebrate those, but also look at those, um, you know, those not so awesome things that have happened in American history and look at how we can use the mistakes of the past to create, uh, correct the present day and the future and, you know, just learn to get along. And, and, uh, so, for, so for that, I have always loved American history and I love my heroes. You know, I love to look at people's lives. So ever since I was little, I've always loved to read biographies and learn about individuals in history, whether it's American history or other parts of history. Um, so for nonfiction, or for one part of my reading life, a big part of my reading life is nonfiction. I love nonfiction. Um, I just think nonfiction reads, if, if, you, if you read about people's lives and those events in history, I think it reads a lot of times better than fiction because it's the real deal and it actually happened. It isn't something just made up. And so, um, you know, you find the right historical characters and you can find some pretty vivid stories uh, that have, like I said, actually happened. So I, th I always find that fascinating. You know, what can we learn from history? What can we learn from the people of history? So in my favorite books, uh, if we look at the fiction side of things, I have always always loved historical fiction. You know, being the history teacher I am, I love things tied into history. And so um, I can't stress that enough. I, I, there are very few historical fictions that I have found, you know, if they're, if they're written well, I, I usually always like them and I get engrossed in them and I put myself in the time period and I've always loved that. And then the other kind of 
uh, fiction that I really like is legal thrillers. Uh, John Jakes is a favorite author, and that gets into another tag here in just a second, but um, I uh, not John Jakes, John Grisham. I'm sorry, wrong John. <laughs> uh, John Grisham has always been one of my um, just all time favorite authors. I, I can't even remember what got me hooked on him. It was, I was in college, I know that, but um, I, I have always, always enjoyed his stuff. Oh, I know what it was. I went and um, I was adopted. And so a lot of my biological family, I didn't know real well, but my senior year of high school, uh, my aunt actually contacted my adopted mother and had said, you know, we've lost contact with the boys and we always loved my sister and her kids, uh, but we lost contact when the adoption came and, you know, I was wondering, can we come out and visit? Um, and then, so we, we made that contact and then, uh, we went out to Pennsylvania for Christmas that year, me and my younger brother. And that was an absolutely wonderful time. And I got to not only get to know my, my aunt from when I was little, because I didn't really remember her. We were little when we last saw her, probably four or five years old when we had last saw her. And so we were getting to know her and her family. She's And she's got uh, two, two boys, two girls. And um, we got to know them real well. And I really got to know my my uncle, my uncle Verl. And uh, for Christmas that year, we didn't have a lot of money when we went out. We weren't, I just don't think we were thinking. So we didn't take a lot of money with us, but uh, we went to buy Christmas gifts while we were out there for everybody. And of course, I didn't really know them that well. So buying Christmas gifts for people you don't know, know real well can be kind of hard. And um, I got to noticing that Uncle Verl really likes to read. And I bought him a, I want to say it was a paperback. I'm pretty sure it was a paperback of uh, John Grisham's The Street Lawyer. And I think that book, if I remember right, it was new right about that time period. It might have been a year old. But I noticed that he ate that book up and just read through the whole thing. And so the next year when I went off to college, or I guess it had been about a year and a half, when I went off to college and I had switched colleges and went up to Northwest Missouri State, they had a little bookstore there in Maryville where they sold used books for a pretty cheap price. And I started looking at these John Grisham books and I noticed that my uncle, he, uh, you know, he, he read that thing in two days, I think or maybe three days, but he read it in a really short time period. And I was like, well, you know, if he likes that, maybe I should give that a try. And I started reading John Grisham books and I have been hooked ever since. I love his, his stories. They're fast paced and, uh, they're, they're just always good. So anyway, um, that was kind of a little ramble, but I, I like historical fiction and I like legal thrillers and that those legal thrillers, that all comes from uh, meeting my uncle Verl for the first time and how he ate up the John Grisham book. So thank you, uncle Verl for that. And then uh, the last part of this first question, um, you know, if I look at individual books that have uh, really been near and dear to my heart, uh, when I was little, you're, if you remember the scholastic uh, book order forms. My my four year old started preschool this year, and uh, this was her first week of school. And she actually brought home the Scholastic book order, and it just brought back a flood of memories for me. Um, and so she was picking her books out, and I kept, you know, I got to thinking back on my time when I was in first grade. And at that point. Uh, Christmas of first grade is when I went into my first foster home. And then I went into a lot of foster homes from first grade all the way through uh, basically fifth grade. I was in and out of foster homes all the time. And one of the only things that uh, really got to to travel with me, other than my clothes, I would, you know, when we would pack up for a new um, foster home, I threw all my clothes into a trash bag, flung it over my back, and away I went. And uh, that was my my suitcase was a trash bag, but I didn't get to really take a whole lot with me from you know from place to place. And early on, the one thing that I got to go that got to go with me in my travels was my Scholastic books that came from those book orders. And so, anyway, uh, 
that I had ordered, I think it was like three different dinosaur books that uh, I got out of them in first grade. And um, one of them was probably way over my head uh, as far as what was in the book. But I know when I figured out how to read and how to sound out words, I read that thing over and over and over. And it is darn near wore out the pages. The staples have come apart and the pages. Are, I'm going to make a video. Okay, so pause a second. Um, Todd... Um, and what is his? Oh my goodness. I'm going to forget his booktube channel name, but, uh, and it's not Todd's bursting bookcase. This is a different Todd. Uh, Todd had asked me in the comment section to come up with a video on books that meant a lot to me, you know, as I have, uh, grown up. And, um, I got to do that, Todd. I will make that video. I promise. Maybe I'll even try to do that this weekend. I don't know. But, um, anyway, um, those dinosaur books are books I'm going to put in that video and they're upstairs in the upper room. I would go get them, but the girls are all still asleep because it's kind of early in the morning right now. But, um, those dinosaur books were some of my favorite, favorite books. And I'll get back to those in just a minute. Um, the, as I got, you know, I moved into my next couple foster homes. I really like the Berenstein Bears. Those were some of my favorite books as well. And you could get those out of the Scholastic magazine, uh, just like the dinosaur books. But I always liked the Berenstein Bears because uh, the two the two kids were a little bit ornery, were always getting in trouble some way, somehow. And then, uh, but they were ornery, but they were good kids. I kind of felt like I was kind of like the Berenstein Bears. And uh, there was always a moral story that, or, you know, a moral lesson that went with the story and how they would, uh, they would get in trouble for something, but then they would uh, always come around to the moral side of things and fix it and everything would be all kumbaya at the end of the book. And I always liked those. I read a whole bunch of those when I was in, um, when I was in elementary. And so I've always liked those. Uh, other favorite books that I've had when I got into upper elementary and throughout middle school, uh, and I've showed them on this on this uh, channel before, is the biographies, the their upper elementary middle grade biographies from Landmark Publishing. Landmark Biographies is what I call them, and they always got that uh, that little symbol. It looks like the I think it's like the arch in their symbol for their for their publishing house, but they did biographies of just about everybody known to man, it seems like. But I went through the elementary and like read, I, I don't know if I read all of them, but I read a lot of them. I know the, the ones that they did on sports figures, I read all of those in middle school. Absolutely loved them. I ate them up. I read the 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 ones on the pres. I did some on the presidents. I did, you know, just anyway, various landmark biographies have always been favorite books of mine. And as a, as I have gotten older, I have started to go back and collect those again. And as I see them at, you know, an auction or a used bookstore, or, um, you know, I, I find them for free all the time. Uh, I pick those up and it's, it's out of pure nostalgia that I pick them up, but I love them. Uh, Another favorite book that I've got is uh, John Grisham's uh, Kent Family Chronicles series, especially the first book, The Bastard, and then the second book, The Rebels. I love those two books. I recently did a buddy read uh, with, with um, the... The Bookish Bryants, I'm sorry, I, I went blank there for a second, with The Bookish Bryants, and um, he he wanted to do a uh, book buddy read with that uh, on those, because he'd heard me talking about them and heard some other people talking about them, and so we did that buddy read, and it was so much fun to get back into those books again, and uh, so we thoroughly enjoyed those, but I, I started reading those when I was in college. Again, I bought them <clears throat> at that used bookstore that I was talking about earlier and ate those up. I, I read through every one of them. And I'm going to come back to those and talk about those in a minute. <clears throat> and then, of course, my other favorite books are on the American Revolution and the American Civil War. Um, and preferably the antebellum period, the buildup to the Civil War. I, I love those periods of history. Those are all my favorite books. And I've got so many favorite authors and, and individual titles. I'm not going to bore you with all of that. So um, 
we are like almost 15 minutes in and I've only got question number one answered. So uh, like I said, Mrs. Thomas, this is a good tag. This gets you to think back on your reading. So I better move forward. <coughs> Excuse me. We've had football this last week and I've been, you know, hooping and hollering and yelling at practice. And so I've lost my voice a little bit. So you'll have to excuse me on that. But uh, question number two in her tag is, what are your best reading memories? And so for reading memories, I jotted down a couple of these that were kind of, you know, if I look at my reading life, they were real important uh, landmarks in my journey uh, to becoming a an adult reader. And I remember back to third grade where I was in Kearney Elementary and we used to have these reading contests. And of course, I, you know, like I told you, I moved in and out of foster homes. So I was the new guy who nobody knew. And, you know, I always had that feeling that I was um, the white trash kid, you know, who moved in and out of foster homes and stuff. And I, I always had this, this, um, this feeling of, you know, this distance from everybody else. I was a, I think a real likable kid. I was always trying to make friends, always trying to, you know, fit in. And I think people that are in foster homes probably, uh, there's probably a lot of them in that same situation where you just want to try to fit in. You know, circumstances in life are not necessarily your fault. Um, and so one of the ways that I tried to fit in, I remember in third grade, we had this uh, reading challenge where our teacher had this gigantic poster that she hung on the wall, had a grid pattern on there. All the kids that were in the class, our names were written on the side. And then uh, book one, book two, book three, book four, et cetera, et cetera. And we had this contest to see who could read the most books. And you, you, I don't know if you remember those big, piles of stickers that they used to sell in the books. And they were all stickers about this big. They were just little circles with stars or, or moons or, or the sun or what, you know, whatever. And every book you'd read, you'd get a sticker going across the line. And uh, there was this girl in our class and I don't remember her name. I'd have to go. I don't even know if I looked in the old yearbook, if I could even figure out which one she was. All I remember was she was this cute little girl. Uh, and this is from my, my young mind here. She was this cute, popular little girl who um, was really smart, loved to read. And of course, I had picked up reading, maybe for other reasons, I had picked up reading and I loved to read as well. And I found this as a way to fit in. In this contest, I took it dead serious. And my foster mom at the time was also a teacher in the school. And so she, you know, promoted reading with me. And um, so as I went along, I really got into this contest and I started reading, 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 reading. And for me in my reading journey, uh, this was so important because... Um, I got to not only not only just with reading itself, but for me personally, I got this feeling like I am as good as the next person. You know, they are not better than me just because of my individual circumstances in life. That does not make them better than me. And this was such a, uh, I don't know, it was like the light bulb came on for me when I was a kid. Now, I still had my doubts about myself and, you know, I still went through issues in life, but it was at that point that I started to realize that they're not better than me. I am as good as the next person. And, it, you know, I, I could not let my background hold me down. And so that reading memory for me is very, very important um, because I won the contest. I, if I <laughs> didn't tell you that, I did win the contest. And, um, you know, people looked at me like, oh, he... You know, he read that and he beat such and such little Susie or whatever her name was. I can't remember what her name was, but, you know, he beat her. That was awesome. And so I got the I got to win the prize. I think maybe it was a pizza from Pizza Hut or something. I don't know. Uh, we used to have those book it uh, deals. And I know I won a lot of those book it contests with uh, for Pizza Hut where you get the mini pizzas and stuff. Um, I got some prize at the end, uh, but that was a that was a key moment for me. A second key moment for me was in a class with uh, my English teacher in high school, Mrs. Woods, Mrs. Cheryl Woods, great woman. Um, she was the drama teacher. I was involved in plays and all of that kind of stuff. And I really, 
uh, I really got lost in that, you know, that, that became part of my life. And um, she was our English teacher and she taught a, bo uh, a class, great books. My, was that my, I think my senior year. Pretty positive it was my senior year. It's called Great Books. It was an extra class. It wasn't one of the ones that was required. It was one of the extras that you could pick. And there was me and a bunch of my buddies in there. And what I learned, and, and several of those guys were pretty smart individuals. And what I learned in that class, why this is a great reading memory for me, is I learned that I love to read. It's not that it's just a way of escaping life. It's not that it's just a way of making me feel like um, you know, I'm as good as the next person. That was, that was a point in my life where I really figured out I love reading. I, I do love getting lost in a story. And we read some awesome books. I was try I can never remember what book titles, what all titles we read in there. I need to go back and talk to her and ask her what book titles, because she's still alive. And I've, I've ran into her from time to time. Always a good conversation. But I, I remember reading Gulliver's Travels, um, the Iliad and the Odyssey by Homer, um, just several classic books that you might not read in a everyday circumstances. You know, I know people on BookTube do, but you know, the average reader might not pick those up. And we, we read those in my class and I thoroughly enjoyed them. I loved them. Now, I'm sorry, Mrs. Woods, if you ever come across this video, I know I probably didn't do the best job on some of the assignments. Um, maybe didn't put in as much time as I should have. I wish I could go back in life and change things, but I can't. But I do need you to know that your class was one of my favorite classes of all time because I did get that feeling that I love reading and I nerded out on it. I didn't care what it was at that point that I didn't care what people thought. You know, it's I tell my kids in class, if you love reading, own it. Just nerd out and own it. If you like a subject that you, you know, you want to read about and learn about and be a professional in and, and just know everything about, then do it. Quit worrying about what people think. Just own it. Oh, own your nerdness. <laughs> and, um, you know, they always laugh at me when I talk about that in class. But, you know, it's at this point in my life that I did own it. I truly, truly owned it. I'd always liked it. But it's at this point that I learned that I loved reading. And I just got lost in those stories. And some of them were way over my head. And I had to read. I remember reading Homer's work. And I had to read the first chapter, you know, four or five times before I finally got the lingo, you know, the, the, the flow of the writing. Once I got it, though, oh, my, what a tremendous story. So, you know, I... I always tell my kids, own it, and you will find great things with your reading life. And so the third moment uh, that I picked with as a best reading memory for me is um, John Grisham provided this. Now, I was trying to remember which book I was reading. For whatever reason, I remember this story, but I remember this book cover. So I have no idea which one it was. It was one of these two books. And I would love to tell you exactly which one, but at the time I was reading a paperback version on it, and I even made a note on the inside cover. And maybe I kept it upstairs. I don't know. I don't know if I kept it because of the memory or if I donated it. I can't remember. But anyway, it was one of these two books, and my wife was pregnant with our first child, Crimson, and we were in the hospital in Maryville, and of course you... My my first child, my wife was in labor for 25 hours, and so it was a long wait. And while sitting beside my wife, while she was, you know, agonizing in pain, I <laughs> dipped into the book. And um, it's a fond memory because not only do I like John Grisham, but I connect that with the birth of my child. And one of the greatest memories I ever have, the birth of both of my kids. But I specifically remember that one because I was reading that book and it just, I hinged those two memories together. And what a, what a great time, you know, uh, it was very calming for me, you know, and when sitting in there and you're going to become, you are going to become a first time father, um, you know, all kinds of thoughts are running through my head and I'm nervous and, uh, you know, I don't want to be what my father was to me when I was a kid. I want to be good. I want to do it right. And the the story calmed me. And so, um, yeah, calmed me so much I fell asleep. Men, don't fall asleep during uh, 
when your wife's having labor pains and contractions and all that, that is a, you know, probably a good word of advice. Stay awake, drink as much coffee as you can. But it calmed me and I did fall asleep for a little while. Um, me and my wife argue about how long that time period actually was, but you know, anyway, Moving on, so uh, 25 minutes in and we're at question number three finally. <laughs> so question number three is how did you learn to read? Um, so for me, I picked up reading really fast for some reason. Um, my, I remember, I have a specific memory of when I was still with my biological parents and I was probably three, four years old and my, you know how parents spell words out so that their kids won't know what they're talking about. And my dad had spelled out a word trying to talk over my head. And I don't know how I did it because my parents did not, I do not have memories at all of them reading to me. Um, so I don't know how I did this, but I figured out what word that my uh, dad was spelling out. And that became kind of a neat game. He started trying to do that with, you know, four, three and four letter words, trying to, trying to spell them and see if I could figure them out. And for whatever reason that clicked and I was able to figure words out and I did, I did really well, uh, with that and, um, how I did that, I'm not sure. And maybe they read a little bit and I didn't know it. I, I, I'm serious. I have no memory of them reading to me, but, um, anyway, that's my first uh, memory of learning to read. How that happened, I don't know. The, but my next memory is in first grade when I was at East Buchanan Elementary School and I had Mrs. Kellum. Now, Mrs. Kellum was very strict. And I this is a, a good and a bad memory because at the time it was a terrible, horrible memory where we were learning to read and write at the same time because those go hand in hand. And we were doing stuff with the alphabet and, you know, writing it out and trying to get our uh, penmanship and all that kind of stuff. And I messed up on some of the letters of the alphabet for some reason. And I had to stay in at recess and do it until I got it right and work until I got it right. And uh, so for when I was a first grader, that was absolutely terrible. I loved recess just like any kid and staying in was terrible. But I want to put this out there at the same time. I think back at it now, and I think that there were actually probably times where I may have messed up on purpose. Now, I know that sounds weird because I loved recess, but I also loved Mrs. Kellum. Even though she was strict and mean in my young head, I loved her because she provided a stable environment, a stable loving environment. Like all of my teachers have, I've been lucky. I've, I've had, all of my teachers have always been great. I have great memories of all my teachers. And she provided a stable, loving environment for me. And I truly think that I possibly could have been messing up on purpose a couple times so that I could stay in with her and get that one-on-one -on -one time with her. I know that sounds weird, but I really think so. But uh, that is one way I learned to read, you know, in first grade, just like every other kid, uh, you know, writing things out and uh, learning to read aloud, which I didn't really like at the time, especially going even clear through up into high school. I stuttered a little bit when I read out loud. I'd get excited and my words would get mumble jumbled together. And so I had to learn to overcome that. Um, so that's a great memory. And then the other great memory I'd like to you know, share is just how reading can be an escape for you. So those dinosaur books I was talking about earlier in, in the video, uh, I got those in first grade. And my first foster home that I lived in was a little bit chaotic. Um, my foster parents were what I would call professional foster parents. They had a lot of kids in there and all the money that they made off of the, the kids, that, that is how they made their living. And, um, I don't, I don't want to pass judgment. I don't know that that, that they did it in a negative way, but I know they were professional foster parents. And so I got placed in that home and there were a lot of kids of different ages and, uh, you know, both boys and girls from, I was going into first grade or I was in first grade, excuse me. I was in first grade all the way to, we had, uh, they had, their own kids in high school at the time. And then there were even uh, kids that were, that had been with them forever that were, you know, in their thirties. So 
it was a chaotic household and there were times where there was a lot of tension. That kid that was in high school would uh, get in fights with the 30 year old. And um, I mean, fist fights, like boom, boom. And as a first grader, that was scary. Uh, and I was, I was a little kid to begin with, and that was really scary for me. And so one of the things that I learned to do was I would take my, my dinosaur books and I, if it was winter time, I would go and hide behind the couch in the downstairs and I would read my book and I would just escape everything that was happening. You know, there might've been a fight going on on the other side of the couch, like a coming to blows fight. And I would escape into the dinosaur world. And so for me, this was literally an escape. I know people use that word all the time, but it got me out of the chaos. And then, you know, and I did that throughout elementary. That was my, that was how I got away from the chaotic life. And then I remember in sixth grade, that same feeling, but this was not, definitely not in a negative way, but um, my, and I was trying to remember her name. I, I should go up and get the, the, um, the yearbook and, and look for her name. I, for the life of me, cannot remember the teacher's name. I can picture her. I have her face in my head. Um, she was a fun, fun teacher. Uh, we had Mrs. Ratcliffe in, in social studies. And then she was really good friends with the English teacher. And I, for the life of me, cannot remember her name. I apologize. Um, I can picture her. Um, but anyway, she read aloud during our, it was like our um, advisory period during the middle of the day. She read aloud Hatchet. And I've shared this story before on, on my channel. And um, of course, Hatchet is by Gary Paulson. It's about a kid in a plane crash who, uh, he crashes in northern Canada and has to survive because the pilot dies and they're in this little tiny uh two seat plane or whatever it was, you know, tiny plane. And he has to survive in the wild woods all by himself. And so it's an adventure story. And I absolutely love it. Uh, loved it and love it. You just escape into the wild and what would you do in order to survive? And I love that book. It was an escape. And, and it's not that I had anything to escape in sixth grade, but that, uh, yeah, Everybody that loves fiction, that is part of your love is escaping into another, you know, into the story. And so I love that. So that's, that was another way that um, I, re I learned to read is I learned to read because I needed to escape. Um, and then, okay, so that brings us to, I'm quite a ways into the video, I apologize. But the last question, question number four, which is who was your most influential reading teacher? Now I've you know, I've mentioned some of these already. Mrs. Kellerman, first grade, very influential in just getting me my basics. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Um, name that I can't remember in sixth grade. Uh, um, started with a M. Okay, anyway, I'm not going to try to remember. It's going to drive me nuts. I'll remember as soon as I turn this video off. That's how it works. She was very influential. And then my other very influential reading teacher was uh, Mrs. Woods in high school. Um, she she gave me that memory of, I love to read. And I won't tell that story again. You guys have already heard it. So anyway, uh, Book Talks with Mrs. Thomas. She created this book tag called the Reading Autobiography Tag. Mrs. Thomas, thank you so much for um, choosing me as, uh, this is her first tag, I think. And so um, thank you for choosing me as the person to answer it. Sorry if I rambled a little bit, but uh, I like talking about books. I like talking about memories. So um, I challenge everybody to do this tag. Uh, go check out Mrs. Thomas's channel. She doesn't have a ton of subscribers yet. I'm sure she will. She's, I think, at the 30 subscriber mark is what I noticed. And so go give her a sub and check out her videos. She does a very nice job, very kind woman. Um, so anyway, thank you, Mrs. Thomas. Thank you for sticking with me. If you stuck with me these full 34 minutes, everybody out there. Um, and again, I tag everybody. Uh, look at yourself. Look at your reading life. It's only four questions. Answer this and give some love to Mrs. Thomas. So um, anyway, thank you, BookTube. Thank you for spending your time with me. I hope everyone has a great, great morning. And until next time, happy reading.